What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great taco. No, it's not taco. It's Thursday. Dag nabbit. It is Thirsty Thursday, not taco. T oh, I tell you what, you can combine the two. You can have some tacos and some tequila, okay? But um, we're here working in um, our man cave and stuff because the work never ends. We have the autograph signing show this weekend in Chantilly, Virginia, and we're going to be getting some autographs from some of our players like Diggs. Diggs, we're going to go ahead and get his. We're going to get Tony Dorsett. We're going to get Charles Haley. Uh, we're going to be working on getting Michael Irvin as well, and we're going to be giving those things away to you, the fans. So I'm working on getting all those pieces cut. I'm trying to get them done. Not the night before. I'm trying to get them done two nights before. But we have some interesting news on the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, who have done quite a few things. We were teased before the beginning of the league year where we were told that the Cowboys were going to be doing something big. Big things. Big things, we were told, right? And some wonder, well, was the Stephon Gilmore? Was that the big thing? For some of us, once we re-signed Leighton Van Der Esch without saying we can't afford him and Donovan Wilson, we thought that that was actually a big thing. And then, bam, we got the Stephon Gilmore. And just when we got used to that, we made the trade for Brandon Cooks. So some of us thought, hey, okay, the, well, I guess combined, all of these things were big in comparison to what the Cowboys no normally do. I mean, this isn't like Von Miller big or Bobby Wagner big, but this is big things for the Cowboys. And we've been sitting around thinking, okay, I guess we're done because we sit here tonight, exactly four weeks from now, four weeks from now, we'll be getting close to being on the clock yeah, about an hour from now. It's going to be a long night, and we're going to be there in Kansas City. But here's a quote from Jerry Jones. This is Jerry Jones speaking. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones has so far fulfilled his promise of wanting to make a splash on offense this offseason after targeting, after trading for Texas star Brandon Cooks. Now, here's the thing. I, so they, they, he doesn't list to Stephon Gilmore, so he says that's the big thing. But... He may not be done just yet. Jones said the Cowboys are expecting to welcome highly regret, uh, regarded TCU receiver Quentin Johnson for a visit. Johnson announced Dallas would be one of his 30 visits um, following his pro day uh, workout on Thursday. A two-time All-Big 12 selection, Johnson has been one of the most productive college wide receivers in the country over the past few years and was a key piece of the Horned Frogs' run to the national championship this past season. So, there we go. We don't know if drafting him is the big move or not. But we've also heard that Max Dugan, quarterback for TCU, okay, TCU is another one of the Cowboys favorites and he has actually stated that um, teams that have been interested in him um, let me see let me pull it back up include oh, I can't find it right now okay but I know the Cowboys are one of three teams that have expressed um, interest in him and that may be that they really are interested in him or that they're trying to baffle people with BS. Um, so there's that. I'm sorry. It's the Chargers, Jets, and Cowboys have expressed interest in him. So, you know, that's okay. We're definitely looking at getting a quarterback. He would be definitely a later round quarterback. He's not going to be one of the top 10 ones picked. But just because you're picked in the top 10 doesn't mean that you're going to be a great quarterback. Let's see Carson Wentz. see Josh Rosen as well as many many other ones so that's where we are with that and finally shout out to damn Gina Tony Pollard has got a new leg tattoo too and it seems like this crew that did the whole leg tattoo of um Dak they getting a lot of work because <laughs> they not only got Dak's leg they got CeeDee Lamb, and now they got Tony Pollard. 
So I guess that's the in club. I mean, you literally have like four guys working on a leg at one time. I know Dax took like 12 hours. Now, me personally, I got enough scars on my body that I don't want no more needles. I've had enough needles in my knee. Thank you very much. I don't need a tattoo. I know it's a cool thing, but growing up, it used to be only sailors would have an anchor that said mom on it. Okay. And that was it. So, you know, it's just, I'm old school. I.e., I'm old. I can't lay around that long and have somebody sticking a needle on my knee. I just can't. I just can't. So that's where we are with it. And speaking of the draft, I tell you what, I did a point counterpoint with my, my buddy, uh, Game Time Brian, and uh, we'll actually have that up. We'll do that as a uh, premiere video whenever that gets finished uh, with YouTube uh, ingesting it. Um, one thing I am very proud of, you know, I've got people out there that are always talking about me and this, that, and the other. That's cool. That's cool. But one thing I always try and do, I'm not always successful at it, is I try to improve um, what I do and the equipment that I do. And with us going to the draft, I can't take all of this equipment that I have here with us. And even with the uh, laptop that I take on the road and stuff with the multiple screens, it's still a problem to be able to go ahead and carry that from our hotel's about two and a quarter miles away from where the draft's going to be, probably end up walking back and forth because traffic will be a nightmare. It just will. And having some place to set up a laptop and being able to have it powered and everything else, you don't know if we can find a restaurant or something like that for during the draft. It's just too much. So because of you guys, because of Super Chats, because of you liking videos, because of you becoming channel members, we are constantly trying to reinvest in ourselves. And so what we are doing here is I'm actually doing the setup like we will from the draft. Um, I'll be able to take my regular microphones and stuff right here. I've got a Zoom podcaster right here. Look, you see, ooh, you see the lights? It's like it's alive. I can put four microphones in here. I can actually put some sound effects and we'll be able to use our cell phone and broadcast live from pretty much anywhere that we have a cell signal. And knowing that in the NFL, when you are behind gated areas, you know, NFL city and stuff, you have to have a plastic bag that is see-through that is very, very tiny. And here, guys, check it out. This is our whole setup. Battery backup, that'll be able to power the cell phone, the mic mixer, and an extra notebook. Check it out. Just a notebook, tablet, that I'll be able to watch the chat and stuff with, and we'll be able to set up four microphones. So wherever we are, between game time, Primetime, DMV, and myself, we can all have it all hooked up and broadcast to you just like we are right now. Hopefully it sounds good. I've got to play with the mixer and get used to it, but I'm loving it already. I'll see you guys later. Peace.